fatty acid synthesis appears to be a more complex concept to understand, but here we're going to break it down and make it super simple and straightforward. Now, the first thing that we need to recall before even starting with fatty acid synthesis is that in order to uh, synthesize fatty acids, we need two carbon units. Because remember, fatty acid synthesis involves elongating and creating fatty acids, which are made up of carbons. And what are the source of those carbons? Well, the source is malonyl-CoA. How do we get malonyl-CoA? Malonyl-CoA is synthesized via the acetyl-CoA carboxylase enzyme. So essentially, we take ATP, bicarbonate, acetyl-CoA, and we do a reaction and we produce malonyl-CoA, which is a three-carbon molecule. And here in fatty acid synthesis, we repeatedly use malonyl-CoA to create a 16-carbon fatty acid via the enzyme fatty acid synthase and then once we get to 16 carbons we cleave that fatty acid off it's important to note that in fatty acid synthesis the enzyme that we use in vertebrates is called fas1 fas1 now fas1 is only able to synthesize 16 carbon fatty acids so now let's begin. So right over here, this depicts our fatty acid synthase. That is the key enzyme that's taking, that's running this reaction. Fatty acid synthase has, it, it has uh, different domains and each domain has a different enzymatic activity. But what's important to note is that on fatty acid synthase, we have this protein called the ACP protein, also known as the acyl carrier protein. Now what happens is that this acyl carrier protein binds to this malonyl unit. See, if you note closely, this isn't malonyl-CoA because we've lost that CoA. And we'll go over how, how we lost that CoA. But And then over here, we also have this acetate unit. Now, uh, this acetyl unit right over here, uh, pardon me, this is the acetyl unit. The acetyl unit is coming from acetyl-CoA. Now, acetyl-CoA comes and it binds over here. Now, let's look at the difference. Malonyl-CoA binds to this ACP and it binds to this sulfur, forming that thioester bond. And this acetyl group also forms a thioester bond with this uh, sulfur. But the difference is, is that this sulfur is actually uh, from a cysteine residue on the fatty acid synthase, whereas this one right over here, this sulfur, is a part of, uh, it, it's, it's a part of this ACP. So essentially ACP is a protein and it has this serine residue which is bound to a phosphate and that phosphate has a longer arm attached to it, similar to coenzyme A, and at the terminal we have sulfur. Now, this first part, this first reaction, where we see this malonyl group and we see this acetyl group bound, and we are going to undergo this reaction where we are going to, this oxygen, this electrons are gonna fall back onto this carbon, and then these electrons are going to attack this carbon, and then we're going to see a new bond formed. So when we see that new bond formation, that new bond formation happens at the KS domain. So the KS domain is the ketoacyl synthase domain, where we, so if we break down that word, ketoacyl synthase, we are synthesizing ketoacyl. So this is essentially ketoacyl, and it's bound to ACP, so we call it ketoacyl ACP. We lose a carbon dioxide in the process because we lose this, because remember, for malonyl, we only want two carbon units. So we see that this acetyl-CoA, this acetyl group, it, bound to the, it got bound to the malonyl, we lost CO2, and we formed ketoacyl ACP. Next step, 
once we have this ketoacyl AP, A ACP, we have to reduce it. Since, since this is an anabolic process, in anabolic processes, we use NADPH as the reducing agent. It's going to donate its electrons and we're going to reduce this double bound oxygen. When we reduce this double bound oxygen, we get this hydroxyl group and we get this hydrogen. This is called beta hydroxyl. This is beta hydroxyl. It's bound to ACP, so it's called beta hydroxyl ACP. This happens at the KR domain, the ketoacyl reductase domain, because we are reducing the ketoacyl ACP. So we're reducing the ketoacyl ACP through NADPH, and we get beta hydroxy uh, acyl ACP. Now remember, this is all happening on the same enzyme. It's happening on fatty acid, uh, fatty acid synthase. But it's important to note that this ACP, it has the entire substrate bound, and it's just going to move this uh, move the substrate from one domain to another. So this ACP is like an arm. It's going to swing from the KS domain to the KR domain and so forth because each domain has a different function. At the KS domain, we formed a new carbon-carbon double bond. At the KR domain, we reduced this double bound oxygen. Now that we have beta hydroxyl ACP, next, we are going to dehydrate it. We are going to remove water, so we're going to lose an OH, and we are going to form a double bond between these two carbons. We can see that right over here. This is going to be called our enol. So this is our enol ACP. It's bound to ACP, so we call this the enol ACP. This happens at the DH domain, the dehydrogenase domain. So now that we've have, now we've reached enol ACP. Now remember once again, this is all happening on the same enzyme. ACP has the substrate bound and we're it's swinging this substrate from one area to another. So it's going to take this and so it's going to swing it to the next area. So this is our enol ACP. We have this double bond carbon and we need to get rid of that. So we're going to reduce it again. And this time when we reduce it, we get two hydrogens two hydrogens, and that happens at the enol reductase domain, so the ER. Now this final product over here, uh, the substrate, the final substrate, which is still bound to ACP, is called fatty acyl ACP. If we take a look, this is exactly what a fatty acid looks like. We have multiple carbons, it's saturated, and the terminal phosphate has that oxygen bound. And once this gets cleaved, we'll see the other oxygen. So to go over again, what happened is that we have multiple domains. Each domain has a different enzymatic activity. At the KS domain, we combined the acetyl with the malonyl and we formed this ketoacyl ACP. Then ACP will swing its arm over to the KR domain. It swings the substrate to the KR domain and then we reduce it with NADPH. Because remember, when we form this bond, this carbon-carbon bond, we have this double-bound oxygen. We need to get rid of this double-bound oxygen. We want two hydrogens on both on each side. We want a hydrogen. How do we do that? We reduce it. We swing to the next domain. We dehydrate it. We swing to the next domain. We reduce it again. And we got our fatty acyl ACP. Now, <clears throat> there's a problem. In vertebrates, we have FAS1. Now, FAS1 can only synthesize 16 carbon unit fatty acids. This is only four carbon units. We still need to add 12 more carbons, so we need to add six more malonyls. What's important to note is that only in the first step we see that acetyl group. From moving on forward, we're only going to be adding malonyls. Now let's take a look over here. So what happens is that, remember, see how this fatty acyl, fatty acyl group is bound to ACP? We're just going to move it over to right over here. 
So we're going to take this carbon, make a bond right over here. And we see that right over here. So we've moved it over. Now the ACP is ready to bind another malonyl CoA. Because remember, at the beginning, malonyl CoA ba was bound to the ACP. Now we have a free ACP, so we're going to bind another malonyl CoA. So we bind another malonyl. Now what happens is that once we have malonyl bound, we are going to, of course, remove this carbon dioxide group. The same thing is going to happen. We can actually draw out this mechanism. So the oxygen is going to form a double bond with the carbon. This carbon is going to nucleophilically attack this carbon. And so we are going to form a new bond. Oops. Just let's... Uh, this one forms a bond over there, and yeah, yeah, this one will go here. And as a result, we will get this molecule right over here. Now, this molecule right over here is ready to undergo another full cycle of reduction, dehydration, and reduction. So we can see that we have this uh, double bound oxygen that we need to reduce now. So we're going to, once again, we, we have this double bound oxygen. The first step is to reduce it, and then we get that hydroxyl. Then we dehydrate it, we get the enol. And then once we dehydrate it, we reduce it, and then we have a fatty acyl ACP. But this time we'll have six carbon units right over here. And we're going to keep on doing this until we get 16 carbon units. And in the end, we're simply going to cleave off the, the fatty, acid, uh, fatty acid chain. And it's going to cleave, on, uh, cleave off at this ACP. So our final chain is going to be on the ACP. And we're going to cleave it off via the TE domain. So the thioesterase domain. It's going to cleave off this fatty acid and it'll be free to go. Another important thing to note is that the malonyl and the acetyl are coming from the mat domain. So that's the malonyl acetyl uh, domain, where this malonyl originally has a CoA. We're gonna mat is gonna remove that CoA, make it, and then so is what happens is that malonyl first binds to the mat domain, and then it gets passed on to the ACP. Same thing with this originally acetyl-CoA, it binds with that MAT and then uh, it's passed on to ACP. So MAT is essentially the domain that picks up new carbons and it passes it on to ACP. And this cycle just occurs repeatedly and in the end we get our fatty acid.